Okay, so simplifying expressions. First of all, an expression is uh, similar to an equation, okay, but it's only like part of the equation. An equation has to have an equal sign. That's the only like requirement of an equation is an equal sign. So an expression, we will not see any equals sign today. All right, now let's talk about this. This is called a term, okay, a term. And you will hear me say that word a lot, like combine like terms. So a term can be just a number, it can be just a letter, a variable, or it could be a number in a variable together, okay? Now when you have a number and a variable next to each other, so again, this is called a variable, pretty sure we all know that one. The number in front of a variable, we actually talked about that in the DMR, the DMRA, does anyone remember what that was called? Don't feel bad. It's called a coefficient. Okay, so the number in front of a variable is called the coefficient. Now, I know this isn't language arts class. We're not doing all this big vocabulary and everything, but that is a word. The, all three of these words up here are important words for you to know to be successful moving forward with algebra. And remember, eighth grade is pre-algebra, freshman year is algebra one, so algebra is not going anywhere, unfortunately. So a term, you have a coefficient, and your variable. Now, I want you to notice, and maybe you've noticed before, a variable is always a lowercase letter. Always lower case. And I don't have a great answer about why that is. It's just the way it is. Um, you will sometimes see an uppercase letter. If we're talking about finding the area or finding the perimeter, you'll see an uppercase letter. But if we're using variables, it's always lowercase. But it could be any letter, A through Z. Okay? All right. So you can add or subtract coefficients, remember the coefficients are the numbers in front of the variable, that have the same variable. So you can add or subtract coefficients that have the same variable. So you hopefully can see in this expression, so this is an expression in blue up here, there's not an equal sign, that these um, numbers, coefficients, Behind each of these numbers is the same letter, an M. So because each of these terms have an M, that means that we can add and subtract the coefficients, right? Because they all have an M. It has to be the same letter. And it also has to be the same exponent, but I'm not even gonna talk about exponents today, all right? We'll get into that more later. So we have three terms here. We have a 7m, we have a plus 2m, that's like saying a positive 2m, and we have a minus 5m, that's kind of like saying a negative 5m, okay? So what I'm saying with this, with adding and subtracting, we can say 7 plus 2 minus 5. 7 plus 2 is 9, and 9 minus 5 is 4, and then your m just goes after it and you're finished. So the M is just kind of like a buddy that tags along, and that M lets you know, because they both have an M, or all three have an M, that you can actually add and subtract them, but you only worry about adding and subtracting your coefficients. So again, seven plus two is nine, nine minus five is four, and then that buddy M just goes along with it. In sixth grade, did you guys combine like terms at all? You did. So this is not something new. Okay, so some of you may remember and some of you may be like, I don't remember you doing it, so that's okay. So again, this is called combining like terms. So once again, the like terms have to have the same variable, have to have the same letter. And you can combine them by adding and subtracting. You might in your notes underline same variable too if you're writing that down word for word. That way you remember same variable. 
I know sometimes people will be like, that's like comparing apples and oranges. So it's kind of like you can add apples and apples and you can add oranges and oranges, but you can't add apples and oranges and say how many apples there are. Like you can't combine things that are different, right? So we could combine X's with X's and Y's with Y's and M's with M's, but we can't combine them with other letters. All right, let's look at another one. Aiden, did you have a question? Sorry. Yeah, so like if you have like um, seven M plus two M and then you have like the same equation, like minus five R plus five R, can you like um, not be able to add the seven? M? You can combine your M's together and you could combine your R's together and then your final answer would have two, two terms. Okay. Did that answer your question? Okay, that was a good question. And we're not going to see any of those. You're not going to see any of those until later on in algebra where you have different variables within one expression or equation. You're not going to have to worry about that for a while, okay? All right, so I don't really feel like you need to write the um, directions because you're on your same page, but I wanted to put the directions up there in black. So what you can write is what's in blue here, this expression. And... I want you to think about how many terms, total terms, are here. And terms are broken up by the plus and the minus signs. Does anyone want to take a guess about how many total terms are here? <coughs> Aiden? Three or five. One of those answers is right. Five. Five? Five. Five. There's five total terms. You were probably thinking of just the W's, right? So terms with W's, yes. So remember that numbers, regular numbers with no variable, can, are also considered terms. They're actually called, there's something called a constant because they don't change, right? So we have an 8W, a plus 3 or positive 3, a minus 6W or a negative 6W, minus 1 or a negative 1, and a plus 7W or a positive 7W. Okay, so now let's focus on combining the like terms. So anything that has a W, I'm going to circle. So we have an 8W. We have this 6W, but in front of the 6W is that minus sign. And it's very important to include the minus sign with the 6W. And then we have the 7W, and in front of the 7 is that plus sign. So once again, it's important to include that plus sign with the 7. So when you're thinking about combining these... Focus on just the coefficient. We have an 8 minus 6 plus 7. 8 minus 6 is 2, and 2 plus 7 is 9, and then your buddy W, okay? So we just combined those three terms that have the W. 8 minus 6 plus 7 is 9w. Now you go and you look at your other two terms. So we have a plus 3 minus 1. A 3 minus 1. What's 3 minus 1? 2. two. That's your other term. Now we need something to separate the w and the 2. We can't just have a space. So what we put here is either going to be a plus sign or a minus sign. Now, was this a positive 2 or a negative 2? 3 minus 2. Negative. Have we talked about negative numbers? And you're finished. So this would be your answer. Now, you're probably thinking that doesn't look like an answer. Remember, what we're doing today is simplifying. We're not solving and figuring out what W is. We're going to get to that but not today. So today we're just taking something, an expression that has five terms, and we're simplifying it down into something that has two terms. Okay, any questions about what we did here? All right, let's look at another one. So again, just write what's in blue. How many total terms do we have here? Total terms. Um, Ari? Five. Five total terms. Very good. 
So I'm going to be looking first for the terms with the variable. You always want to use the term with the variable first. So I have a 12v. I have this 4v, but I want to include the minus sign with my 4. And I have a 3v, and I want to include the minus sign with my 3. Now, by circling them like I have, it makes the 6 plus 7 really stand out. I hope you can kind of see that. And it also helps me keep that minus sign with the 4 and the minus sign with the 3. All right, so now let's actually add and subtract our coefficients. So 12 minus 4 is 8. And then 8 minus 3 is 5. So 5v. So again, 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5v. Now I'm going to combine my terms that do not have a variable. Once again, those are called constants. We have a 6 and we have a 7. 6 plus 7 is 13. And it's a positive 13, so I'm going to put a plus sign in front of it. And we're finished. Questions? Please, if you have questions, make sure you ask. All right, since we don't have any questions, I'm going to jump past this next slide. I had it there in case we needed it. And I really want us to look at the second example. Oops, that was a little too far. So feel right down this example for me. How many total terms do we have in this expression? Three. Close, close. Four. Four terms, four terms. Okay, so don't just count the, the plus and minus signs. It's the things on the other side of them, right? Okay, always start with your, the terms that have the variables. So you might, if you need to make that note to yourself, you can. Always start with term that has a variable. So even though the six is listed first, it doesn't have a variable, so I'm looking for the terms that have a variable. So I have this 4v, and I'm going to include that plus sign with it. And I have just this v. I'm going to include the plus sign with this. Any idea why I maybe wanted to talk about this one? What might be confusing for some people, do you think, Ari? The v. There's not a number in front of the v. There actually is a number in front of the v. It's just invisible. Any guess? on what number might be in front of V? Uh, Sammy? That was, that's a really good guess, because whenever you think of something that's like not there, it's zero. But what would happen if we did zero times V? When you multiply by zero, what happens? It's all gone. So what could we multiply V by, and we still end up with V? Liam? A one. So if you see a variable without a coefficient, there really is a coefficient there, it's just invisible. It's an invisible one. So when we combine 4v and v, again, 4v plus 1v is what we need to be thinking, which would be how many v's? 5v. Excellent. All right, now we can just do our constants. We have a 6 minus 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Positive two. So we're finished. Done. All right, questions on that one? Because that was very important that we, you all hear that if you don't see a coefficient, the coefficient is a one, not a zero, which would be, would make sense, but no. Good, good. Uh, Ms. Barnes, I'm yep. going to add in real quick. One, and, and she said it, but I don't know if you guys caught it. When you're talking about your, um, your variables and your coefficients, I always think of it as like four V's plus one V. Uh, you know, like, because you're saying you have four of those um, variables. And some, if you do that, that'll kind of help keep, keep that in your head that you're remembering there's one of those V's there. Okay. Yeah. Like four V's would be V, 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 and one V. Right. So you have five total V's. Exactly. Okay. Good, good on that then. We're ready to move on to distributive. Because we're going to now do distributive and then combine my terms. All right. So I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip. There we go. 
Okay. So whenever you see something like this, you see, oh, parentheses, parentheses first. That's really nice. A lot of times people kind of have order of operations memorized and your brain is trained. Parentheses first. You're right. We have to do parentheses first. But inside the parentheses, we cannot add a 2M and a 6 because, once again, they're not like terms. 6 doesn't have an M. But what we can do is we can distribute. And then once we distribute, then we can do what we were just practicing. Okay? So let's distribute this 5. And we're only distributing the 5 to what's inside the parentheses. So the 8M is not inside. It doesn't get it. So we're going to do 5 times 2M. This is kind of review from what you did on Monday. What's 5 times 2M? 10M. And we're going to do 5 times 6. What's that? 30. And there, ooh, there's that plus sign here. So I'm going to put that plus sign back down in front of it. And then again, I have not done anything with plus 8M. Notice that it's not inside the parentheses, so I'm not multiplying it by 5. I'm just going to write down my plus 8M. So that was the first step, distribute. Any questions about that? Second step, just like we were practicing, we are going to combine like terms. Start with your term that has the variable. So I have a 10M. What can I combine with 10M? 8M. And include this plus sign with it. So I'm going to do 10M plus 8M is 18M. Good. And then is there anything I can combine with this 30? Nope. It's by itself. Plus 30. And you are finished. Questions? No? 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 Okay. I hope that no questions means that we're feeling pretty good. It is nice having you in here, Ms. Deminer, to tell me like that you really did practice some of this stuff last year, so it might not be completely. Oh, yeah. Right. But it is, I mean, if someone were to walk in and see this, they'd be like, whoa, what is going on? Like, all these letters and numbers, like. So it looks harder, I think, than what it really is. But because of that, sometimes your brain makes you think like, I can't do this. All right, and just, it's just following steps in the rules and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you only multiply the variable inside the parentheses, or like divide it? Oh. So in this one, yes. So on this one, we're going to distribute first, and you would only multiply the three times what is inside of the parentheses. So that means the nine and the minus five v don't get multiplied. It's only what's inside the parentheses. Very good question. And that has to be your first step. Don't start combining things until you distribute. You have to distribute first. So kind of keep that order of operations, like uh, parentheses first. Keep that in your mind. All right, so let's do 3 times 4V. What is 3 times 4V? 12. 12V. All right. And let's do 3 times 1. 3. 3. Now, careful with this. What sign, add or subtract, plus or minus, goes in front of the 3? Minus. Inside the parentheses is a minus, so let's put a minus right there. Very good. We practiced that when we did distributive property on Monday. Okay, I have not done anything with plus 9, minus 5V. So this kind of goes back to the process where I was saying when we did the order of operations, like bringing it down and doing it in steps and staying organized. So important for this. All right, so now that we've distributed, how many terms do I have? Four terms, excellent. And I'm gonna start with my term that has the variable. So I have a 12V, and what can I combine with the 12V? Not just a 5V, but what's in front of the 5? The minus 5V, very good. So make sure you include the minus sign with that 5. So if we do 12V minus 5V, how many Vs do we have? 7V, Seven. Seven great. And now I'm going to do a minus 3 and a plus 9. Now, as of right now, if I said negative 3 plus 9, you're not ready for that. So because of the commutative property, because of the commutative property, I can put these terms in whatever order I want to put them in. Okay, that's changing the order, commutative property. 
So if a negative three plus nine, like, oh, I'm not ready, you could change the order here and just say nine minus three. It means the same thing. We have this positive nine and that minus three. Minus three and negative three, same thing, okay? What is nine minus three? Six. And you're finished. Six V, or sorry, seven V plus six. Seven V plus six. Questions for me on this one? You all have been asking some really good questions. Okay. Uh, what do you think might be challenging about this one? Aiden? The number in front of the parentheses, so that means we're going to distribute, but what's a little bit harder about it because... Say, say that a little louder, Aiden. Oh, maybe he did say it and I just didn't hear him? Yeah, three numbers in front of the parentheses. Oh, there's two numbers in front of the parentheses, exactly. Okay, my bad, yes. So, two numbers in front, 10 plus 4 is in front of the parentheses. Now, I don't want you to think, ooh, I'm going to do 10 plus 4 and get 14 and then distribute. You have to distribute first. So what you're distributing, I'm going to highlight here, you are just distributing right here, okay? Everything else we're going to ignore for a little bit. Only focus on the parentheses and what's right outside, nothing else. So let's distribute our 4 to the 5R. 4 times 5R is what? 20. 20R. And it's a positive 20R. And we'll just bring that sign down here, okay? And then let's do 4 times 3. 12. 12. What sign should go in front of the 12? A plus sign. There's a plus sign there. Let's put a plus sign here. And let's bring down what we didn't use. So I didn't use this 10. And I didn't use my minus 6R. So again, if that distributive property is right, if those parentheses are right kind of in the middle of your expression, focus on just the number that's right up next to the parentheses. That'll help you with what you need to distribute. Okay, what term should I start with? Ooh, nice, the R, the terms with the R, the 20R and the minus 6R. Remember, we start with the term that has the variable. So a 20R, Minus 6R. 20 minus 6. 14R. And then we have our 10 plus 12. 10 plus 12. 22. And you're finished. How we feel? Okay? Yes, yes. I'm looking over my notes here. Felt pretty good about all that. Um, all right, some reminders. So when you're putting things into your Google form, I want you to keep in mind that first, variables have to be lowercase. So if you're using an R, you need to say 14 R, that's good. If you put in 14 capital R, it's not gonna count it right. Okay, so lowercase letters. Um, Keep in mind that you, when you write your answer, so this answer has two terms, that the term that has the variable has to be listed first. And also, the spacing, don't put any spaces. I know when you're writing you might have spaces, but when you're typing this, just like you typed it in uh, for assignment four, there should not be any spaces between your numbers, letters, or add or subtract signs. Okay, so 14R plus 22, no spaces. Make sense? I still wanted anyone to get things counted wrong because you put it into Google Classroom or to the Google form a little bit differently than what it is on here. All right, any last questions? Because I want you to give you time to get started. That way you can ask Ms. Devon and I for help individually. Okay, let me stop this video and I'll give you your paper.